Hey, good Wednesday morning, July 3rd. It is just a little bit before 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Michael Clark here with BAM Weather. Hey, we're going to talk about Hurricane Barrel. We're going to talk about the excessive rainfall that we've had here the last couple of weeks and a little bit more coming. We're also going to talk about the failed attempts at significant heat that have set up and update you on the yield, corn and soybean yield thought processes right now, along with our best take at the forecast over the next couple of weeks. So let's get right into it today and take a look at uh, at what we're again what we're talking about hurricane barrel impact extreme rainfall continues major heats failing to show up I'm going to talk about that a calmer week two forecast to near normal temps for some of us um, and the latest yield outlooks as we've got a small sample size but uh, we're seeing some pattern evolution similarities to some years that may offer up some clarity here all right so. Where is the forecast failed? Well, and like I said, putting on the on the slide here for you to see and hear, uh, looking back, it's hard to say um, we or I would have changed any wording in the outlooks. Um, strong signals, negative angular momentum, uh, negative PDO, positive SOI, even uh, attempts at wave five patterns aloft here, all significant. Um, normally high confidence signals for heat and significant heat to surface. A lot of signals really suggested that that would, that that would occur. Uh, looking back, I, I feel as if saying that, uh, uh, I feel better saying I, I would not have changed the message. I, I don't think I would have changed my outlook even seeing it not materialize and looking back on it. I wouldn't have bet against those metrics. Um, Sometimes in the future prediction business, you just get it wrong. And that's where I've been wrong. And so um, we've got a couple of things we think that are influencing this. With that said, I, I do not believe we've seen the last of the heat risks overall in this forecast period. Okay, so or in this uh, seasonal outlook. We'll talk about that here in just a moment. Um, and, and the thing about future prediction is, you know, is, is, is looking ahead um, the forecast ahead is never determined by the, the forecast that's behind you. You know, you're going to miss one here and there, and you're going to hit, you're going to hit some there as well. You just hope you met, you, 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 uh, you hit more than you miss. <laughs> uh, so hurricane barrel this, this morning, still a, a category four hurricane. It is approaching Jamaica. It'll be there this evening and, uh, it'll hit Jamaica as probably a category four hurricane or just, just south of the island there moves into the Yucatan Peninsula here in about two days. So uh, by this time Friday morning, it's probably knocking on the doorstep of the Yucatan as a, as a Category 2 hurricane. As it gets about back over into the Gulf by day five, a day four, day five, um, it's possible that it can re-strengthen. Where it goes from there, whether it can go uh, straight into Texas, um, or Mexico here, like you're seeing, or have more of a, of a jog like this, will be determined by the, the trough up here in the U.S. Can it pick it up and influence it and cause this to recurve, or does the trough swing and miss, and does it continue to go west? That's the challenge in the forecast with Hurricane Barrel. You look at the last several ensemble mean forecast runs, all the ensembles we use from the European, the American, the United Kingdom, and the Canadians, Look at the big shift here. The black is the latest run. You can see the run yesterday. Uh, you can see the last couple of runs. See O2 uh, or the uh, zero Z uh, O2 12 Z O2. Look at the shift. There it is here, and it's shifting west. The ensembles are trying to suggest it can ride upward and possibly ride the Texas coastline. The latest run suggesting less of an influence from the trough because of uh, less of a recurve, but still suggesting it can get picked up. We're still you know, a couple days out from really knowing, but if you're on the Texas coastline, Corpus Christi area, I would certainly uh, be concerned, have your, have your guard up, and um, you know, watch this. Uh, just be, be, be on guard. These are the particular scenarios. I'll enlarge these here on, uh, while I've got it pulled up that we we sent out to the uh our customers yesterday and uh, listen the 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 scenario of where it can go a uh, track a go do more of this um would would certainly bring the, the wetter risks here into the south central us 
okay? Um, heavy, heavy rain across Texas. Where it's been very dry, I mean, it would obviously bring a lot of rain. And a lot of that rain and, and cooler temperatures would meander in the south central U.S. Track B right now, I think, is pretty much off the table. I, I don't think this is really an, an, uh, an idea right now or, or, or a possible outcome. I think, if anything, it's going to go further west. Okay, so that's the idea right now of where the rainfall would go in these particular situations with Hurricane Barrel. Let's bring it back closer to home real quick and take a look at the excessive rainfall forecast. Uh, for today, the day one excessive rain says eastern Kansas, most of Missouri, southern Illinois, southern Indiana. If you remember on last, last week's weather yield, I talked about there being a quasi-stationary boundary setting up here. This is what's happening it's not doing it for as long as what I thought it would. Um, and nonetheless, it's still going to bring rain and heavy rain. We'll continue the excessive rain risk tomorrow in the same area somewhat, just a marginal risk. The very bad news for the folks in northern Iowa, southern Minnesota, eastern South Dakota is tomorrow brings another slight risk for excessive rainfall and more flooding. It has rained relentlessly here. This also happens to be an area of the ag belt where there's more corn, corn and, and, and uh, soybeans grown than anywhere else in the, in the grain belt in the United States. It's just a very, very heavily populated growing area, um, especially for corn. All right, so we look at rainfall the next 60 hours. There's two areas really of main focus uh, where the heaviest of rain looks to go. Uh, and that's probably right through here. This is out by Saturday morning. And then again, areas that absolutely do not need the rain. There's really two areas of focus here. Folks in between, yeah, you may miss out for the most part. There may be some isolated local rains there and drier conditions down to the south and west and still continuing very dry over here in the Carolinas. We'll talk about how dry it's been there in just a moment, but that's your rainfall forecast. Through Saturday morning, look at the last seven days. If you see an orange on the map, that's really two inches or more of rainfall. It has been excessively wet the last seven days. I'll say the area it's been the wettest in, now obviously the, the prairies have been wet. Um, up here in the Dakotas, it's obviously been very wet here. We, 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 we can't, we can't uh, exclude South Dakota. And then we look in the Wisconsin, Minnesota, over towards Nebraska, uh, the, the epicenter, if you will, of the heaviest rain the last seven days has been here. Iowa has been soaked. Eastern Nebraska, flash flooding, um, a ton of rain has fallen uh, over the last seven days. And we've missed a lot of rain in Illinois, Indiana. Uh, uh, there's been a, a little bit there in, north, in a sliver of north central Indiana. Uh, Ohio has missed the rain. Northern Nebraska, southern South Dakota has missed some rain. Uh, when you look in the excessive rainfall department, either excessive rain or uh, a lack of it, right? Not much of it at all. We look at the areas that are certainly uh, looking at, at just too much water right now. And for the most part, it's, it's right in through here in the grain belt with an obvious clear focus right here, which is the area tomorrow under the slight risk for more flooding range. It's not good. This area here that hasn't gotten any rain, you may have a saving grace from barrel if it can ride the Texas coastline. We'll see that that's in the coming days. It's gone suddenly dry here. Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, northern Kentucky. We need the rain. There's chances of it tonight. Chances of it tomorrow. I don't think it's a widespread everybody gets it, but I think there's certainly the potential for some rain here. Um, best chance we've had in a little bit. This is the uh, crazy map, June 1st to now, to where we're at. This is a look here at the, uh, the rainfall. 132 means you're the driest you've ever been, ever, since 1893. This area here right now, uh, for the most part, really running probably the third driest, if you averaged it out, stretch in summer since 1893. How about that? That's that's uh, that's crazy. Um, there's some places in there, first and second, uh, uh, you know, or second and third, if you will. I'm sorry, this may be third or fourth overall. Uh, but look at some of these areas here: 131, 131, 131. The driest uh, epicenter of this really about right here in terms of rainfall. So the out east, man, it has not rained. That's where some of the summer ridging or, uh, uh, originated. Now you have the opposite end of the spectrum out here across. Uh, again, really a, 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 a very large chunk of the, the, the grain belt, 
south of that line, you know, the wettest it's ever been in, in many locations there. Uh, here's the area I was talking about with the lack of rain that has gone drier suddenly the last uh, you know month in the grain belt. You know, ranking 115th, 120th, uh, it's nothing to bat an eye at. It's been dry. I know at my house here, personally, I just haven't had any rain in a month. All right. Temperatures, oh, that's the wrong slide there. Uh, that's an old map. My apologies. Here it is. Oh, no, that's, that's not the old map. Here we go. Sorry. There's an old map behind it. Threw me off. Um, temperatures, here here they are. Uh, month to date, the lower number is, is the hottest. Okay. Um, so it's been warm, but it hasn't been anything record territory-wise uh, right now. You know, Chicago, Northeast Indiana, Northwest Ohio, top 10 warmest um, in terms of total temps since June 1st. But again, nothing too terrible to note here. The soil moisture content update using the Sport List Index, um, which is my personal uh, favorite. Obviously, you can see the excessive moisture issue here. Uh, there's really no question about that. But again, where it has gone drier uh, is, is very, very interesting here. And look at the Western Plains. Look how dry it is really in the Western Plains overall. That's a, an interesting uh, um, thing to point out. Now, the, the change the last two weeks, this is where we look at, you know, just how dry it's gotten. The last two weeks, you look at, at uh, portions. I'm going to just draw this line here. So you obviously kind of make it obvious for you, but right inside here, the last two weeks, it has gotten very, very dry. Now, a lot of this area here, I think, is going to see some relief the next two days. So if you're inside this area here the next two days, I do think there's going to be relief into this, uh, this sudden dryness that you've seen there. Uh, rainfall the next seven days kind of highlights what I just said. We look out now to seven days. Again, this is not needed. This, is, this isn't uh, really invited or welcomed. A lot of fields underwater up there really needs to be considered. There's a lot of corn there that is not doing well because of the rain. Uh, it's got to be got to be taken into consideration. The next seven days, again, there's some, some moisture chances in here. It's not like it's a bone-dry forecast. All right, and then obviously we'll watch barrel because if barrel does in fact decide to, 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 do, to do one of these numbers and do this, uh, you know, this would change a lot of this in here relatively quickly, and that's not off the table right now, okay? So here's your rainfall uh, departure from normal over the next week. Everybody's pretty much above, for the exception of the Canadian prairies in the northern third of the plains in Florida, okay? Um, you look at uh, week two rainfall clues, the European data, the American data, and the Canadian ensemble data, is all drier across the grain belt for week two. And this is something that, that uh, it would come at a very welcomed time to, especially up in here, we need some drier weather. My concern is, is that that particular pattern doesn't last too terribly long. It's just drier following a trough. That's the concern right now. Here's the, the, the day one to five temperature departures. It's obviously very cool, which is great. Uh, there's no question about that. Uh, the 5 to 10 continues to run cooler as that trough swings through. That's what's going to bring in the drier weather conditions. It's in the extended as the flow pattern starts to come back. Um, it's possible that in the extended, the ridge may, may start to come back up and through here and continue the flow pattern or turn it back on for more moisture in here. Um, it, it, there's some indication, some research that there can be excessive moisture there. Uh, in the back half of July uh, as well. Now, the heat outlook, again, as I stated in the beginning, the failed process for it, uh, forecast, again, looking back at it, I don't know that I would have changed the wording. I'm just going to say I'm wrong. It's just the way that it is. It happens. Uh, I got it wrong. Um, and so, you know, it doesn't change the way we look at it going forward. We still see above normal temperatures, much above normal temperatures in the western U.S. Do I think at times, for a time, Somewhere late July, there is somewhat of a significant heat push. I do. I do think there's still a heat wave in here, a notable one, um, because of what I'm seeing in the North Pacific and because the, the, the continued pattern drivers I've seen for months now, eventually they will show up. I, I think eventually that they do. Um, I did mention the potential. This is the 16th through the 29th. 
of their uh, rainfall pattern showing back up, you know, after this week two calm down in the pattern, can it get wet again and perhaps uh, feature a lot of rain? Yes, I think it can the back half of the month uh, for sure, okay? So just something to keep in mind there. The reason I think that, I mean, there's a strong signal right now of a, of a pretty significant ridge building in the North Pacific along the, Bar the chain of the uh, Bering Sea Islands here. That correlates 17 to 21 days later. That, that, that correlates here. That, that tells us there can be a ridge here. And this is a strong signal. Um, two to three standard deviations above normal there. I think it's something to keep in mind. For the July pattern, listen, the only year we see right now that is remotely uh, resembling this is, is 05. Uh, 05 had early July tropical behavior, uh, tropical pr uh, problems, all right? Um, it, here's how it panned out. It was slightly above normal. It was cooler here. There's your tropical issue. There's your tropical issue here. Um, it, 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 boat, it, it turned out drier up and through here um, and wetter through here. Okay, that's what happened in 05. 05 was a good year for the crop. We have a couple of years that, that uh, we're watching for this, the week three and four forecast, the back half of July, and that is going to be years like 05, 17, and 22. These are some tropical forcing analogs that aren't, that aren't too bad. Uh, note some of them do have heat in here, and really some potentially some significant heat, with the exception of 22. It was seasonal. But there are some, some very heavy rain signals in here, 05, 17, and again, 22, a little bit further east. All three of these years featured an active back half of July, which is why I think that this, is, this, this probably has merit. The above normal precip is certainly not off the table. All right. What does it tell us looking into August? Well, real quick, here's the preliminary August forecast right now. We're forecasting a pretty hot August, especially the Great Lakes, the Mid-Atlantic, and the Northeast below normal further west. Where the epicenter of that ridge sets up will tell a lot of the story about August, okay? If that ridge is a little bit further west, let's say the ridge real quickly sets up here, okay? Let's say it's right here. The idea is, is that moisture can, in fact, come into the picture into the grain belt. If the ridge is a little bit further west, it would shunt off or basically shut off moisture into the grain belt. Okay, and you, you would have you would be hot. The axis or the epicenter, a thousand mile shift east or west is going to make all the difference in the world, if you ask me. So, latest on the yields, uh, Pacific Ocean Nina analogs. Right now, the latest thought process is a, is a is a uh, at trend or slightly above, based on the failed attempts at the heat to show up, the failed attempts at the strong storm clusters to arise. It's an at or slightly above trend yield being possible right now with the latest analog set. The only year that's giving us a, a bumper crop, if you will, right at it, would be 1998. Uh, and, uh, I'm sorry, 20, 2022, 1998, slightly above. 2022 uh, was, was, was just below trend. It is, a, it is, a, it is a, an analog. If August were to go hotter and drier, that could have some implications on that. Right now, there's not huge risks in crop production from a weather standpoint due to those failed attempts of the heat to show up, okay? Soybean puts a plus 1.3, all right? So the plus 1.3 comes from, um, you know, these years overall boating well for moisture and the heat avoiding the uh, soybean belt uh, late August into early September, all right? So, um, this is the latest here on the thought process, and we'll continue to kind of watch this. It's a tricky forecast as we're coming out of this Nino and um, attempting to go into the Nino. The timing, the evolution on that is difficult. So um, we recommend keeping it with us daily, uh, watching our daily outlooks, our daily reports that we send out to our clients. You can do that by subscribing uh, on BAMWX.com. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel for the latest as well. Have a happy and safe 4th of July.